Hello, and welcome to Marathon Swim Stories, where we explore the human side of the superhuman feats of endurance swimmers and those who support them. I'm marathon swimmer and coach Shannon Keegan. Today, I have the distinct pleasure of introducing you to my pod. These are the people who encourage me to get in the water, stick by me through the winter, stay up late to swim at night, and support me when I want to swim a long time. Todd, Celeste, and Jocelyn have done everything from commit entire weekends to camping by a lake, to watching my kids on the boat while I'm out swimming. Their generosity is such a gift. We laugh, we cry, and talk about pushing each other. And while I may be the instigator, I wouldn't do any of it without them. I hope you enjoy this little window into our Southern Oregon swimming community. So today, I'm super excited to introduce the world to my people, my pod. These are the ones that help me swim places because I couldn't do it without you. I know I'm going to (laughs) cry, but um, everything from watching my kids to keeping the pool open, and um, I just love you guys, so thanks for being here for me. Um, Let's see. Uh, We'll start with um, introducing yourself is a good place to start. So um, we're all, we all live in Southern Oregon. And I always like to clarify Southern Oregon because we're much closer to California than the Portlandy wet side of Oregon, which people, most people think of. Um, mile marker 21 for me, exit 21 <laughs> on the Interstate 5. But um, I've been here about eight years. I moved here in 2013 and met these fine folks. I can remember my very first practice showing up at the SOU pool and sharing a lane with Jocelyn (laughs) and asking her if she wanted to swim straight or circle. (laughs) She wanted to, anyway, it it was a, it's a funny memory, but probably (laughs) irrelevant. Um, So I thank you all for opening me, welcoming me with open arms to this community. It's been, it's been amazing to be here, but let's start with, um, I don't know, Todd, why don't you introduce yourself first? How long have you been here? What's your swimming background? That kind of stuff. Oh, okay. Um, So I have been in Southern Oregon since 2001, Celeste, is that right? 2000. (laughs) Um, I can't remember when we moved back here, really. I think it was late 2000. Um, And started swimming with Rogue Valley Masters pretty quickly after we got here. Um, Which was kind of a necessity because it was my, um, it's my thing is swimming. I've been swimming my whole entire life. Started swimming competitively when I was 10 or 11 years old. And, uh, at that time I, in, when we started, when I started swimming with Rogue Valley Masters here, I thought there was no possible way that I was ever going to swim open water. That's <laughs> a crazy idea to me. And then a guy named Dan Gray decided that, um, I should really, he kept encouraging me. And then he decided he was going to organize a Maui channel swim relay team. And I thought that was like the best thing ever. Like that was the best way to go start or open water swimming. And so in the summer of 2003, I started swimming an immigrant and swam at Applegate our the swim that we host here, uh, that Rogue Valley Masters hosts in, and, uh, Dan was the race director at the time. And I think in 2003, it was like a 1500 and there was a, like a stage race thing. Um, it was some sort of, he called it a carnival because there was like a 200 to 400 and an 800 or something that all added up your times into something just, you know, he had like funny ideas like that to try something different almost every year. Uh, And I had, I just fell in love with it. I had a great time and uh, started swimming in the lake every summer. I couldn't, I couldn't wait until the water warmed up enough that I could get in the water and split my time between the pool and the lake every summer. So that's kind of, um, yeah, I swam competitively in college and everything. So that's why I came out of college and started swimming masters and the pool seemed like the only place to swim and anything longer than a 500 or a 1650 sounded like a whole long way that I was not prepared to do, but 
somewhere along the line, Shannon convinced me to do the Portland bridge swim. And so now I've done that. That's, that's the longest swim that I've done. And I, and of course now I've done it three times and <laughs> I go from somebody who <laughs> did not want to get out of the pool to doing the Portland bridge swim three times and going to the Northeast kingdom and doing a week long of swimming that added up to 45 miles. It's, it's a big, yeah. but I, I focus a lot on open water now. It's kind of my favorite thing. Yeah. Not yeah. super long marathon swims. I would say that, um, the Portland bridge swim is probably the longest swim that I want to do all at once. Um, as a, as like a 10 or 11 miles is plenty for me. Right. So we'll come back. We'll come back to some of that. It maybe. <laughs> That's the last you want to introduce yourself. Sure. Oh, lovely wife, Celeste. <laughs> I'm Celeste. I uh, grew up here in Southern Oregon, somewhere between mile marker 11 and 14. <laughs> um, <laughs> A uh, stone's throw away from Immigrant Lake. Um, so I, you know, I grew up around water, but it wasn't until I met Todd that I was introduced to the swimming lifestyle and culture. <laughs> um, <laughs> definitely on the sidelines many times cheering um, people on at, at both at the pool and at uh, the Maui Candle Swims. And um, it wasn't until 20... 13, I think I started swimming with Rogue Valley Masters at the SOU pool. Um, and it was maybe the next year. So the first, when I moved here, that was the first, that was when you was first started doing Masters? Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, and I, I enjoy water. I love swimming. Um, but I remember those first days in Serenity Lane, uh, trying <laughs> to figure right. out, okay, wait, what is this like breathing and water <laughs> exercise at the same time. Like, I've got to figure this out. And it was, it must have been the next year. Um, there's the Oregon Open Water Swim, the uh, the lake swim. Series, yeah. The series. And we were at Elk Lake and oh, I was getting right. on the shore and they had a 500 cable swim. And I just, I was looking at it, watching it and cheering people on. And I suddenly had this, thought of, huh, I can do that. I bet I could do that. I'm going to do that. Um, and so I signed up for, um, signed up at some point and, and then met these wonderful people who were always wanting to go out into the lake and that's wonderful. So here I am. Here you are. <laughs> Jocelyn. What's, what's your swimming background? Where are you from? What's your story? <laughs> well, um, I, grew, I grew up, well, I was born in St. Louis and mom got <laughs> some swim lessons right away. My mom was, uh, she didn't like getting her face in and she didn't really care for swimming, but my dad grew up in San Francisco and um, he was an abalone diver right near the the shore and fishermen and so they moved back to Berkeley after my brother was born in 58 and I grew up in Berkeley and we always went to Stinson Beach and dad taught us how to body surf and so I've been a water baby my whole life and um swam and played water polo throughout high school well really junior high high school college and other you start stuff. water polo kind of right away you didn't do just do like swimming like just uh swimming swimming well i was age like group, thing. so yeah. i was probably eight six eight something in there swim team mm -hmm. i grew up two blocks from a pool in berkeley nice. which then i taught swim lessons at and i like started <laughs> at so um water has been a big part of my life and then moved to um actually lived on the east coast for a while swam in Walden Pond and down near Provincetown and, um, but didn't know about the open water swim group there until your marathon swim stories and how big that is there. And then moved to Ashland in oh, two and um, joined Road Valley Masters because pretty much everywhere I've lived throughout the States, I've found a master's team and swimming has, has been Swimming and water polo have been part of my life and all those people. And um, so I, I came in 
to Rogue Valley Masters doing other open water things. I had done Alcatraz and Maui Channel and um, I went to school in Santa Barbara, UCSB. So we did buoy swims there and I was a lifeguard at a pool down there. So really just around the water all the time. And, um, and the, the longest distance I've done is a 10K, mostly at Applegate Lake, but love doing your virtual one this past fall. So we went to a marathon. And then um, started getting into cold water swimming with you, Shannon, and Todd, and then <laughs> Celeste, too. And so that's been kind of an interesting journey and, and just love being outside and in nature. And, and I, um, I realize, you know, distance is, is not, uh, it, it's interesting to do. Like I did a four mile swim with a friend who was doing a birthday swim. I'm like, yeah, I'll get there at five in the morning with you and do that. But like, I love just stopping and seeing the eagles or the osprey at Emigrant. And so um, I'm, I, I, I completely enjoy social swimming too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> What, what provoked you to do like the first, like why did, why did, why did you gravitate to the 10 K like just to get more training in or like, why did you um, do your first like 10 K? That, so actually my first 10 K was, um, was really like Todd and Dan, he mentioned Dan Gray um, and RVM. We, we were more consistently hosting a 10 K every summer update. So like Todd was saying, the the summer swim in July at Applegate that Rose Valley Master hosts, um, the distances would vary. And so, uh, you know, we would always camp there. You know, I swam that summer, I was pregnant with Conrad and um, <laughs> I tried to push it at the end because I'm like, that person's not gonna beat me. But I was, <laughs> I don't know, I was six months pregnant or something after I got out, like, holy moly. Um, <laughs> But then RVM started being more consistent, consistent in hosting 10 Ks. I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll try that. And, um, and the first summer I did it actually was the summer after my dad passed away. So it was, it was interesting training for that. And, um, and then just thinking about dad and, and then mom passed the year after. So it's been um, the long swims, you know, my sister and I, she's, she used to swim with uh, South End Rowing Club down in San Francisco. So we'd go on swims in Aquatic Park. And she and I talk, would talk about, you know, open water swimming is, you know, it's really a metaphor for life because it's like wherever you are, that's where you are, right? And so open water swimming, you know, you're there. And so, you know, your, your path may weave or you decide to turn around or, but it's like, there you are, and you just have to keep going, right? There's no like, you know, plucking out of the water and like getting you back to shore. So, so my, my sister and I talk a lot about swimming and open water and, and how it relates to life and all of that. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> the, the metaphor for life that is, I guess. <clears throat> what about you, Celeste? When did you start thinking about so you started with this 500 at Elk Lake <laughs> yeah you know it was a, it was an evolution I think for me like again I, I've always loved water I've you know I spent my childhood in water but I never was a swimmer um and then when I met Todd we you know I was introduced to that lifestyle and culture but I had had a you know I had a I had a, a change in job um and I started swimming at SOU pool with Rogue Valley Masters. Um, and I had, you know, I had been going to open water swims with Todd, but again, as like support, you know, the support person. Um, and I, yeah, I was at Elk Lake one day watching people and I thought not only can I do that, but I had this, I want to do that. Mm. And, it, and it was, it was, it's, you know, I never aspired to do it. It wasn't everything that I was ever going to train for, but I had that like inner little spark of, I want to do that. Um, and I, I, I actually, I, I think I didn't, I was watching people. So I didn't actually sign up for that one, but I signed up for the next year 
Um, but instead of doing just the 500, of course, Todd said, well, you could do the short series. <laughs> so <laughs> so that's like what, 500? 500, 1,000, and a 1,500. 1,500, yeah. Um, and so I did that and I was like, oh, and okay. Well, that was fun and it's beautiful and, and I get to be out here and um, yeah. And then, and then I signed up for Whiskey Town and, and that's I, like two point is it, well, I think I probably, the, I think there, there's two swim mile and a two mile or something. Yeah. I probably just did the mile. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And then so slowly the years until, until I got the, the spark of, well, I can do a 5k and I want to do a 5k <laughs> and I suspect that a 10k is coming at some point <laughs> Interesting. being around all of you guys. Um, <laughs> So I, yeah, I, yeah. So it, it really was just kind of a slow evolution. I've always loved water, but mm-hmm. I wasn't a swimmer. Um, and not only did I have the feeling of that I could do it, but that I, I wanted to. What, what did it feel like when you finished your first 5K? Gosh, when I finished my first 5K, oh my gosh, what was that feeling? I'm sure it was a happy feeling of... <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm sure it was a happy, accomplished, joyful feeling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did yeah. you think like, mm, I'm not, that, I, I could do a little more or did you think, oh, well, no, done with that. <laughs> um, n- neither. I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't done with it, but I also wasn't like, yeah, I'm ready to do the day. <laughs> I was, kind of, I, I think it was more. Huh. it was just a happy, joyful, peaceful feeling. And, and I ended up, I think I, after my first 5k, which was actually at Elk, it was the Elk Lake 5k. Um, I think the next, I think the next swim, maybe a month later was a Donner Lake. Mm, mm-hmm. So I had, so I had that 5k. And so what, what I thought was, well, I did a 5k. Well, I can do Donner because that's only. It's like 2.7. Is that right? Some, uh, something yeah. I can't remember exactly what it was. Was it was so it gave me confidence that I could do more. But I already signed up for Donner, so there wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't like I did the five k and I was like, yeah, no, I'm gonna sign up for more. I was like, I'd already had signed up for it. So right, right. <laughs> yeah. I like your approach though to something you see. I'm, do you? I'm thinking back, just having knowing you a little bit from at least maybe more so before we had kids and we would train for triathlons together and do you feel differently about swimming than you did than you do like triathlon like with joy or competitiveness or I don't know anything in your approach oh that's a good question um I think swimming or triathlon or um, hiking or I, I, you know, I did the Portland marathon in 2010, like things have been, have popped up in my life at various stages and at various places in my life. Um, and sometimes I do something because I want to be physically fit. Sometimes it's because I want to accomplish a goal or, and I do have a competitive side to me, but sometimes it's, I just want to experience the, the joy and the adventure of something. Um, so triathlon was, well, I'm going to, I'm, I've never done that. I'm definitely not a runner, but why not? You know, I've never done it. Let's just try something. Whereas I think, um, that was the same with the Portland marathon, did the Portland marathon and the Kauai marathon, like on foot again, it was like, well, let's, I've never done this. Let's try that out. (laughs) Um, See what it feels like to be a marathon runner today. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I feel like, you know, I, I do different activities for different reasons. And I think swimming right now, it's the, the joy of being outside. It's the joy of being in nature and water. And it's the company that I'm with. Um, and, and I do have a competitive side. I do like to like go a little faster than I did last, last time or whatever, but, 
Um, I do have that inside me. Um, but since there haven't been any races this past <laughs> year, it's difficult to tap into. It's difficult to tap into. But I have done different activities at different times in my life for different reasons. Mm-hmm. And I've, I've been at different places in my life. <laughs> yeah. I just think of the times that like you'll come to the lake like the same time as Todd and we'll take off swimming and you'll maybe take a nap on the boat. <laughs> like, I just, I love your approach. <laughs> like, I wish that I just could maybe feel like that I would be okay with just taking a nap on the boat today. <laughs> but, yeah. but I don't know. <laughs> maybe my, where I'm at in my life isn't at the, at the point where I'll just be like, okay, maybe I need to get to a spot where I could be okay with taking a nap on the boat. Maybe that's something I should aspire to. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I am in the water. I'm just way behind you guys. <laughs> yeah. But um, I don't know. I just, it, it seems to me like you do seek the joy in it exclusively. And I, I don't know, I admire that. So. <laughs> um, Todd, let's go back to your, when did you start pushing distance? A little bit. So there was the Maui, you've mentioned the Maui channels, like your first open water kind of event thing. Well, yeah. I mean, we, we did um, in club swimming in high school or like end of middle school, like eighth grade, ninth grade, somewhere around there. We swam across Lake Washington along the I-90 bridge. I grew up in Seattle swimming club up there. So we were always sort of in the water. Um, and we had a pool called Coleman pool that's right on the Puget Sound. And we would use that for like polar bear dips sometimes, like in the middle of practice, they'd be like, oh, if you guys can go in and immerse yourselves and swim a 50, then you can get out of practice. And we would all run out there and try not to get cut by a barnacle and run in. Like, of course, most of us failed because it was so much colder than the pool and we weren't cold acclimated. And so yeah, to get back in the pool. But um, yeah, I mean, that was at the time that was so that's a couple of miles, I don't know, maybe a mile or something across there but it was like a group swim and we had a boat and we were all kind of half treading water and half swimming. So I think when I really started going toward longer distances, like that's actually that when we went into Maui in 2003, I swam the Waikiki rough water as well. And, and that's, that's a 2.4 mile swim. Important. Yeah. And so that was the longest like solo swim I had done at that point. Um, and I think I, I started like, you know, with the Oregon Open Water Series, I got exposed to a lot of different distances, you know, 3,000 and then 5K up at Elk Lake. And then Elk, you know, they have the um, the Survivor Series, which is all mm-hmm. five events. Um, so 500,000, 1,500, 3,000, and 5,000. And so that became a goal, right? To, oh, let me see if I can do this whole 11K, like over the course of a weekend. Mm-hmm. And then we added in the 10K at, at Applegate when we were hosting that. And, you know, from, so... I think it was just sort of like a drip, sort of like, it was almost like a drip campaign, you know, like <laughs> <laughs> gradually over the years, like, okay, I did that 5k and then, Oh, Applegate has a 10k. Well, I guess I might as well do that to see how mm-hmm. that goes and ended up doing it like six or seven times after that, you know? So, uh, and then when the bridge swim came along and you were like, let's go to the bridge swim. And I was like, Oh, well, that's long. <laughs> um, but I was like, well, I've done six miles and maybe I can do five more. Well, um, that first one was really painful. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think, I think it, like Celeste said, it's like, it's kind of like it was an evolution. And, you know, I think I would say that as I was, when you moved here and started swimming with us an immigrant, I think you started pushing us to go longer distances. <laughs> like prior to you being here, we would go, a mile out and a mile back or so and I think back her. fondly on those days sometimes I'm like I remember <laughs> when I just we would come and do like going to the dam was like a half you know half season in we would you know do that 5k to the dam and then uh-huh. I remember last year I was like let's go to the dam like the first time I was we were all together it's like yeah happened to the days when we would just go to the point <laughs> yeah you're, you're like a you're like a like a, a swim whisperer you're kind of like a little drug user but like in a good way you kind of you're kind of like hey just try just, just try it good let's just you know? go and the next thing you know you're like deep, man. <laughs> yeah that was like yeah back then when you started we were, i remember one of those early days that you were swimming with us being like okay we went to the point and this is like the first time we're going to the dam 
Mm-hmm. We were going to swim across the lake and we were all like sprinting because we thought, oh my God, we're going to get run over by a boat. Right. right. It's of course we did. And now then, with we, the rowers, but. <laughs> yeah. The rowers weren't really there at that time. And yeah. It wasn't a thing. And we pretty much had the lake to ourselves anyway. Yeah. Um, thankfully. Uh, but yeah, it was. And now, yeah, now we go like, oh, let's go 5K like every week. <laughs> like Friday 5K, right, Joss? Um, <laughs> stuff like that. And we've, we've done, and then we've done the perimeter of the lake. And it's just kind of, I think that, yeah, we, we used to, it used to be that we would swim 1500 out and then take like a 10 minute break and like look at the, the birds and <laughs> see what the weather was like. And then we would swim 1500 back and be like, great, that was a good workout. <laughs> yeah. And then Shannon's like, don't you guys maybe we should go to the point. <laughs> oh God, that's so much farther, but it's only like a thousand more, you know? Yeah. And actually, once you start doing it, it just kind of becomes, you kind of don't really want to stop. You it's know? fun or to like, see the different parts of the lake at different, the different times of year. I don't know. Like yeah. when you kind of get to the point, you're like, well, let's just like, let's go see that point over there. <laughs> yeah. I do that when I'm hiking too. No, I hate it. <laughs> like, no, I'm good. You wanted to swim with me or we, whatever. We hiked here. Let's turn around and go back. Like, let's just see what's up around the corner. <laughs> let's go see what's over that hill right there. Yeah. I, I get that. I think that it becomes, it became more of, um, and, and open water swimming, at least for us with Rogue Valley Masters, you know, like the pool is a very pool focused workout and people are like there to work out and then they get out and they go to work. But open water was kind of a little bit more social um, for a long time and still is. Yeah. You know, yeah we get to the point and then we stop and, and talk. Right? Yeah. And it's sort of check in with each other and everything. Cause you know, you're at the pool and it's all on the clock, but you go to the lake and it became more like adventure swimming. Like, Oh, let's, let's go over that way this time, or let's go swim to that buoy thing, or let's go see what's up the creek, or like, we just sort of- That was of, fun, then we did yeah. the creek. I don't know why we'd never done that before. We always just went the same way. And then last year, was, yeah. was it <laughs> with Jocelyn? Oh, go ahead. It was because of COVID and the, um, the, the county park was closed. So the boat ramp was oh. closed. So there were yeah. no fishing boats zooming down to that part of the lake. So that's why we Got went it. that way toward the creek is because- we knew we wouldn't be hit by a fish or fishing boat. We that's literally right. had the lake to ourselves. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Special and quiet at the lake. But I do also want to point out, um, RVM has a long history of swimming at Emigrant because yeah. before, before I ever moved here and, and started, you know, Dan Gray and Frank Phillips and June Mather and... Um, and Daniel was swimming but like I remember I mean my kids were little little so I didn't make it out to the lake but there was a group going every summer yeah I I was super impressed when I moved here and there was just like that there's this yeah that like yeah Daniel and June like then they're like yep it's lake season let's go it's like wow this is so cool (laughs) so we came into a team that was already established, yeah. you know, in the eighties and, um, and they were hosting open water swims, you know, um, at Squaw Lake or Emigrant. And I think, um, yeah, I think Emigrant they did one year, you know, so, so again, like, like Frank and Dan and Lynn and, you know, there was already a, a strong open water group that that we're putting on events every summer yeah, so yeah. into that yeah and it would uh, a, a few of them would even basically stop swimming in the pool altogether in the summer mm-hmm. and only swim at the lake and they used to do like shuttle swims like they would do they they did a couple times where they would swim from our starting location at Songer Wayside and swim all the way around to the other side and somebody would have a car left over Green, there. At the so Green they Spring did kind Spring. of like a 3K, 5K sort of thing. Yeah, somewhere over on Green Springs area and like on the other side of the lake. And so they definitely had that really well established. And and so when Dan was like, You're, we're going to the lake, you know, come on out. And I was like, oh, that seems weird and long. And I don't know. I like Dirty. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, like, I don't know if I really had an opinion about that, but um, having grown up swimming in Green Lake in Seattle and stuff, but <laughs> um, yeah, then once he, once he got me out there, I was like, oh God, this is the best thing ever. And so I started splitting my time. And then I started doing like, 
like Joss and I and Daniel and, and a couple other people, we went and did Golden Gate the first time they had Golden Gate available again after 9-11. And so that was, what was that, 2012 or something, Joss? And then or somewhere around there. And then, you know, we had, I did Alcatraz a couple of times and I started just sort of finding like, oh, what about this swim? What about this swim? You know, like when we, I did Maui Channel Swim like five times after that, because I was so hooked. I was so excited about it and organized a couple teams and there was a couple Oregon wide teams and um, other people organized that I joined. Anytime I heard somebody was going to Maui, I was like, sign me up. <laughs> For a team um, though, you don't ever want to do it yourself. Um, I didn't really think about doing it solo, um, at that time, for sure. That was all before I had done the bridge swim. Uh, and now I've swam longer than the Maui Channel swim. So maybe someday. And then of course there was an accident there and they, they removed the solo swim category for a few years. I think they're doing that again, but, um, yeah, anyway. And then there was a, there was any, so we would just sort of, I was just sort of try to find a swim. And like, when we went to, when we happened to be in Ireland, a few years ago, it was like, oh, there's a swim on Sandy Cove Island around Sandy Cove Island while we're there. Let's go do that. You know, and it's almost become like trying to find a swim anytime I go on vacation. Yeah, right. <laughs> a reason to go on vacation, you know, it, it, with the Oregon Open Water Series, it was such a like the way it is. It's such a social thing. And people, yeah. the same sort of group of people are a lot of times and, and other people come and go. But, you know, people will come in and camp. And they all hang out together over the weekend. And it it's not just a, oh, come in, do the swim and you're gone. You know, it's usually right. people hanging out and there's multiple swims on a weekend and it becomes like an excuse to vacation, to go vacation, mm-hmm. but you swim while you're there. And so for me, that's like an ideal sort of combination. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I guess between the, like the, the social Oregon water series as the social and, you know, you don't care so much about the distance. And then now it's also become this like travel vacation idea of like find a swim wherever you go. So it's a nice little marriage of swimming and travel or holiday or vacation or camping or. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it really is. Yeah. When did we start swimming cold, Jocelyn? Whose idea was that? <laughs> My fault. <laughs> Well, it, so I think it was fall of 2018, maybe. You and Todd went to Waldo in like oh. October or something. And then. Um, That's right. Yeah, it was like the end, middle September. Or it was after Labor Day, wasn't it? When we saw Jessica up at Waldo. Yes. Rain down rain. And it was raining. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kid Slash was on the kayak in <laughs> the rain. Awesome. <laughs> Yeah. So you two went to Waldo and then I think because you were trying to train for Scotland, the lock. So oh, you- well, that wasn't that was supposed to be. I think it was maybe Tahoe the first oh, season. Okay. Anyway, so because so this year was our th- my third winter. Third winter. winter yeah. Right? So 18, 19, 19, 20, 20, 21. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Why did you let me talk you into that? You're way better at it than me. <laughs> now you do it way more than I do. <laughs> well, that first winter, like, like you and Todd swam at Waddle, and then you're like, and then you were talking about, you know, wanting to, to swim through the winter. And I'm like, I want to do that. I don't, I don't know. Like there, it was, there was, it wasn't like it was a challenge. It was just like, I had been swimming in the summer at Immigrant so much that I, I love being out there and in nature. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'll do that. And and I guess also like growing up in the Bay Area and swimming in the ocean, like I literally, I can stay in the ocean for hours body surfing. Mm. And I never would get cold doing that. Um, so I don't know, maybe it was that. I was like, I don't know, something else to try and yeah that first winter we Shannon, we, just, we swam like we never got into dipping we didn't even know about i know yeah we would at least do some tri- little triangle or something <laughs> we're serious <laughs> that's crazy i was trying to remember if we did every other week that first or with every or was it yeah i think it was only like every other week that first year yeah yeah or it might have even been like we're going to do it at least once a month like it might have been it might have been once a month yeah yeah 
And then the next year we said, okay, we're going to go every Wednesday. And having that consistency was really helpful. Yeah. 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 Shannon, I love how you say, well, how did you let me talk you into that? You have <laughs> this way, Shannon, that's just like, it's your, your passion and uh, inside and, and, and you just have this way of just like, you know, let's do this crazy wild thing. And people are like, yeah, I'm on board with Shannon. Let's do it. <laughs> you have a very, it's a very good skill. <laughs> And Shannon, at great point, Celeste, and and I think you know Shannon, like like you you were wanting to swim colder water in prep for any uh, swim you were gonna do, and so for me, like I don't know, maybe it's the lifeguard in me too, but it's like okay, well I don't want her out at the lake alone, <laughs> you know, so I'm gonna go support you. So I feel like that's how. I got into it is because like, okay, I'm there to support Shannon and I don't want you to be alone at the lake and okay, I'll be there, you know? And then once we're there, it's like, okay, earplugs, caps, go. Right. <laughs> right. I feel extremely fortunate to have found people that want to support me. Thank you. <laughs> if I haven't said it already, I'll t- try to say it a hundred more times. <clears throat> well, I think from my perspective, I've enjoyed that because it has pushed me a little bit farther to do things and as opposed to getting, you know, sort of being stuck in a rut, doing the same old thing. I kind of enjoy having like a little bit different, like going to do swim the suck. It was like, I mean, okay. It's like the Portland bridge swim, but on the other coast, yeah, let's go check out that water or to the Northeast kingdom to do this swim week. It's like, yeah, let's go check that out. You know, it, when it works into the schedule and, and, or even just saying, yeah, let's swim to the dam. It's like, you know, and it, for a long time, it, I was kind of like, you know, when we used to do a 1500 out and then 10 minutes talking and then 1500 back. And I was kind of like, yeah, you know, I don't feel like I really swam that much. You know, I could always swim a little farther. So I guess I'm a little farther and then I swim a little farther and then I swim a little farther. And then pretty soon I'm swimming 5k just for fun in a morning workout or, you know, it's like 6k. Oh, then it's 7k. Oh, wait. It's dang near a 10k wait I didn't bring any snacks you know? <laughs> right. like, yeah last year weren't you like you'd stay and like grow with a second wave of people or something like I don't know it seemed sometimes like I mean crazy distances last summer well we had some of the kids some of the high school kids because oh, they yeah. didn't have any place to swim so I would sometimes do an out and back with them because they would you know basically do like a 3,000 was pretty long for them mm-hmm. so yeah I, I was doing that sometimes just to kind of keep them company and make sure they knew where they were going but yeah, it's, it's like, I have, I feel like I can keep swimming a lot of times when I'm not really pushing myself to just keep on going. Well, you can always go a little farther. It's kind of like when you're in a hike and you're like, yeah, let's just go see what that is. We can always go that much farther mm-hmm. <laughs> you get there. And you're like, well, what about over there? And then suddenly you realize, crap, I got to swim back. <laughs> but that's a, that's sometimes I enjoy the education. I don't know that. I, and like I said, I've, I've swam like 10 or 11 miles and enjoyed that education. And I'm not sure that I need to educate myself farther than that. <laughs> at this moment. Um, it doesn't feel necessary. <laughs> what Cause I do feel about? pretty blown at the end of those kinds of swims. Okay. Like, I don't, the one thing I don't mind is training. You know, I like mm. training and I like having something to train for. Mm-hmm. And for me, training is more of the fun part than the actual mm-hmm. swim. So like, I don't mind training with you to like for your long swims, mm-hmm. um, knowing that we're not swimming 20 miles in, a, in one swim, you know, like we're doing maybe 10 K or, or, you know, we're doing seven miles or something, eight miles, but. You don't um, see yourself reserving a pilot for some solo endeavor. I don't think so. It doesn't, it doesn't excite me. I'd much rather, I much, the really enjoyable part for me is just getting out in the lake and swimming or in whatever, like, I've had this idea to swim the Nepali coast on Kauai, mm-hmm. uh, which in multiple days. So it's like 11 miles total, I think, Come or something on. like that. We can do it in one shot. We don't even but see that time. that's like, doesn't sound enjoyable to me. I'd much rather spend <laughs> a couple nights on the beach and then, you know, in the wilderness and then swim another few miles and then spend another couple nights in the, so that's what I'm like, I'd much rather just be in the water and be on the beach and just enjoying nature. Like Celeste was saying, 
<laughs> as opposed to being like, oh, I got to hit this goal, you know, and I got to get this thing done. It's like, well, I like being a lot more flexible about it. And then you'll have time to swim with the sea turtles and such too. Like, like that's what I realized, uh, you know, like I was just in Puerto Escondido visiting my daughter and it's like, I'm swimming and then it's like, oh, there's a sea turtle. So I stop and I float around with the sea turtle a little bit. But, um, you know, what I also love about this group is that we do um, full moon swim. Oh yeah, that's what I was yes. going to say too. That's what I, I love about you guys. It's like, I'll tell you what I'm training for. And then you're like, okay, well, when are we doing a night swim? You know, <laughs> you guys are amazing. But yeah, we started, when did we start full moon swims? I don't know. A couple of years ago, maybe, or three years ago. Yeah, because I remember, was it 17 when I was going to go do <clears throat> Lake Men from Magog the first time and we organized some kind of night swim with because i remember like june came out we got some kayaks out but i feel like that was kind of when we first started the night thing yeah. oh there was one you guys did from your house though we're at the potluck before i remember missing that one having two small children yes but, but that, i think 2017 might have been the first summer that we at least that i was around for starting a night swim I thing. The yeah but then now it's become a thing well jocelyn's making it happen every month yeah, <laughs> yeah and it's totally true yeah and it's been super fun yeah and one of one of the coolest things was uh, watching planets rise like todd and i were out and we're like we'd we'd see the like the sky get a little brighter so we're like oh there's the moon and, no it wasn't the moon it was <laughs> a planet and then another planet and then the moon and that was amazing and yeah. it's interesting because the, the night swims that we started doing were kind of like you're training, you know, for a nighttime swim. And so we were swimming. And then sort of last summer, we just sort of, we would swim out like maybe a quarter mile and then just tread water for like 30 minutes while we watched the moon come up and then be like, all right, that's good. We're going back in now. It became less about swimming at night than mm -hmm. and about like just sort of enjoying the moonlight coming up and being in the water while we're doing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I appreciate though. You'll always ask me though, Todd, <laughs> like how far are you swimming today? Where I have to be like, oh crap, do I have a goal? Because <laughs> sometimes it's more fun to just go out and uh, tread water and watch the planets rise. <clears throat> but I appreciate that you always ask me, put me on the spot because <laughs> it's important <laughs> when I set lofty well, goals to have I goals. think I need also <laughs> to know what I'm psyching myself up for. <laughs> like I, I kind of like to get when I'm getting in to be like, all right, I know I'm going to swim to this point and back. Or, and sometimes mm -hmm. I adjust it in the middle, like, oh, I feel pretty good today. So I'm going to go an extra thousand or something, or I'm going to go around the corner or something. But I always kind of like to have a general idea of what I need to expect. And <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like when you go to the pool and you want to see the workout before you get in. So you <laughs> yeah. Or like, or like you want to know the workout, like as you, after warm up, you kind of look ahead and see like, okay, how am I planning that's how I do it anyway. A lot of us, Jocelyn's I think, like, no way. for a long time. <laughs> like it's always like, it's, it's nice to know kind of what's coming. So you say, okay, well, I'm going to put my energy in that spot, or I need to know that there's actually a bunch of sprints here and then a bunch of sprints there. So maybe I should plan. You've just divulged a huge part of your personality. You need to know what's coming. That's probably why <laughs> you don't want to swim much longer than a uh, 10 miles because you might not know what's coming if you swim longer. <laughs> Well, but I, I think if I knew that I was swimming longer than 10 miles, I would be like, okay, this is, you know, I'm swimming this distance or whatever. And I would train. Right. How did, so how did it go like in the Maui channel when things just didn't quite go your way? Because, you know, like you have to be a little flexible in the ocean. Oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was, um, some years it was flat and some years it was as bad as it can get, mm -hmm. uh, depending on our course, you know, like one year it was white caps out there. I mean, it was like, five foot swells or something. And so we, I got, it was coming from the, it was broadside to us, you know, we're going across and in the way the channel is, you know, it's going North to South and the, like the, 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 the way the waves and the wind were going. And so the, the boat was going perpendicular, you know, basically perpendicular to the waves, like kind of basically crabbing across the, wow. the channel. And we were swimming, you know, 
and I got rolled multiple times, like a white cap and a, a wave would just come over me. And I, I'd come up and just be laughing, you know, like, what can you oh, do? Oh, like, right. um, I've done that channel multiple different ways too. Like one time we did a three person team. One time we did a two person team with one guy swimming solo behind us. That was kind of, we were kind of not exactly a fully legal team, but we got approval from the race director to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and so we were doing 30 minutes on and 30 minutes off with a guy right behind us. Um, so it was, it was interesting doing it all those different ways. Cause when you do it, like as sort of like the official way, you do actually get that much swimming. Mm -hmm. You swim for 30 minutes. And then after that, you do a 10 minute legs until you're done and there's six people. So you're mostly sitting on the boat. Um, so it, it's, and there was one year too, that year we did it with two guys and one person swimming solo behind us. Our navigation was a little messed up and we had to swim up current to get to the finish beach. And it took a long time. And I, I'm fine with being flexible like that, but I, I have like the frame of reference to be like, <laughs> this is no. the, compartment, this the is... compartment we're doing it in. <laughs> the flexible and, compartment. <laughs> yeah. And what happens in then inside that compartment is like whatever, you know, but I know that we're doing this point to this point and whatever happens during that time is fine. So I think in, I don't know, maybe you're, maybe you know more about me than I do, but no, I, no. I would almost feel like if I was going to do something longer, like, like with a bridge swim, it was like going, 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 going. I know I'm doing this distance. Right. Um, and I think I learned a lot about uh how to frame myself in that swim because the bridges come so fast mm -hmm. and then there's the like a really yeah. long there's like three miles where there's no bridge and you yeah. can see a bridge down there but it doesn't seem to get Don't any look. closer Don't and look. that really psyched me out the first time i did it yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um and i think because i was i created expectations for myself and i think i've gotten a little better about not doing that yeah um you know, I thought, oh, okay, you know, this is like, that bridge should be coming along pretty quick because all the other bridges did, but it's not that way. No, and, not the last one. That's and so the last time I did it, I actually had a pretty good time. I, I just decided I'm just going to swim and ignore all that stuff. You know, yeah. like a bridge is going to come by great, whatever. I don't care. I don't care which one it is. You know, I'm not marking distance or time. I'm just swimming Yeah. and I'm just going to keep on swimming. And, um, and just ignore that stuff, keep my head down and just keep going. And I think that's what made that a more enjoyable swim. And maybe the, when I did the suck, I was out of shape, but mm, like, I, that's right. that was, was that was, was not a say, good swim for me. What, what was worse, the swim the suck or Masa Whippy? <laughs> oh man. Um, good question. <laughs> I think Masa Whippy wasn't actually that bad. I just kept going, you know? Um, cause that was what, nine miles. Yeah. Uh, I just, I didn't really have a lot of attachment at that point. I was just going for swim, you know, mm -hmm. and I think suck, the suck was worse because I hadn't swum in like almost like three weeks or something before mm -hmm. that. And I didn't really know. I thought, Oh, the current's just going to take me down the river. And then I started getting in pain cause I was out of shape and I, just, I think I just got in my own head and started getting angry at myself or frustrated or something. And <clears throat> I don't know. It just, uh, it was a late season swim. We hadn't been doing a lot of like swimming. Like, for swim me, here. What's that? We didn't have anywhere to swim here. I remember going to the copper boat ramp at Applegate because it was the only place you could get in the water. I think. <laughs> yeah. But it was also really smoky. So you that's could, right. every, every outdoor thing is like you would inhaling yeah, that's right. It was a smoky Particles. summer and, and it was, I think it was all three weeks or a month that I really hadn't done much swimming. And I had just, I was at a conference for two weeks before that, where I basically wasn't doing any swimming. For me, it's for my own confidence. I have to, or it feels better to me to have training. Like if I'm going to swim an 11 mile swim or a 10 mile swim or something, I want to be able to swim daily and, and swim consistently, you know, a few miles. I don't necessarily need to do like, oh, let me make sure I'm doing this X number of distance every single day. Mm -hmm. I just know, okay, I want to get, a, you know, maybe a, a 5K here and there kind of thing. But I want to be consistent about it. And it's better for my body too, mm -hmm. my brain and my body. Like my body appreciates uh, and swims better in, a, in a, like a, a culminating event if I have consistent training up to that point. 
because mm-hmm. it just keeps my shoulders and my, and my muscles and stuff tuned, even if I'm not swimming long distances. Mm-hmm. So like, I don't, I can't, I don't think I could train and do events like you do, Shannon, where you do like <laughs> quite erratically. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And just sort of like off the couch, sort of do, you know, like not off the couch, but like a, a, a little bit of training here and there or very quality training and then go to a big event. I, for me, I need to do consistent training that it just feels better to me. And do you think that's more like a confidence? that it probably think- is some of that. Yeah. But I think in general, I've learned over the years that for me to swim well and consistently well, I need to swim consistently. Yeah. I uh, definitely can tell when I swim like, well, like three days in a row compared to when I swim three times in a week. I can tell, I mean, just in my stroke, but it's funny because yeah. I feel like I can get to that same spot in, you know, in a three hour whatever, in a three hour swim, if that makes any sense. So I can, so after three days of swimming, I'll, you know, so anyway, basically saying that I can find my feel for the water over the course of a really long swim. I don't know, (laughs) but I get, you know, I get that. Yeah. For me, it's, I would rather, instead of trying to do a big lump of a three hour swim and then a lump of a three hour swim, like I'm going to, I'm going to go through a whole cycle during that whole thing. And I'm going to fall apart. Probably for me, it's better to like swim, an hour every day or an hour and a half, you know, yeah. something like that. And even if I don't reach those kinds of long distances, like going into the bridge swim, I'll do a 5k once a week or something, but like over the course of the week, I know I'm getting what, like probably at least as much as the bridge swim. Yeah. Right. So I feel fine with that. I'm like, mm-hmm. but I'm, I've been doing swimming every day. So my body is conditioned for that kind of stuff. And it's just better for me. Has your technique evolved or changed as you've pushed distances a little more over the last few years? Absolutely. Multiple times. (laughs) Multiple Um, times. Yeah. I mean, the first time I did the bridge swim, my shoulders were really hurting at the end Mm -hmm. of that in 2015. And I realized I needed to focus on my technique and figure out what I was doing that wasn't. Then I did a clinic um, and adjusted. I think I was, I, I can't remember if it was around that time. Do you remember Jocelyn when we did the, um, what did that, with that one with Jen, the, the, the clinic? I can't remember. It has that specific name. Anyway, it's, I um, can't remember what it's called now that guy who, who's all about swimming long and, you know, the particular technique for going through ocean waves and everything. But I had to adjust my technique to be really careful about my recovery. And early in my open water career, I had to change my technique quite a bit for um, my recovery because when I was in college and everything, I had almost a straight arm recovery. Mm. And that hurt me a lot in some of my open water swims early on and I had to adjust that. And then I had to think about actually hand placement and core and where my pole was going. Um, and this last couple of times I've done longer swims, I haven't felt that bad. Um, when we did the kingdom swim week with all those long swims every day, I was doing some naproxen. <laughs> Massa with I think Celeste had the, she was my escort. I think we had that in the, in the kit, you know, as um, those daily long swims. So I think that's part of it is I've definitely messed with my technique to, and tried to get it to a point where I can swim a long time without being in pain. But there's a point at which for me and my body, I think it, it's, I don't care that much about going the long distance to push through that kind of pain Mm -hmm. to say, well, it doesn't, I'm just going to swim through it, you know, or whatever. Um, cause I would much rather have a good time. I'd rather, instead of being constantly battling myself to be like, no, fix your technique or just forget about the pain or take some drugs or whatever. Mm-hmm. I'd much rather just have a good time and come back and be like, that was so great. Instead of being like, God, that hurt so much. And I had to do all this stuff to figure out how not to hurt. And, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, but yes, I've definitely gone through multiple evolutions of technique over the years. Um, you mentioned boat support, well, escort. What, um, <laughs> why do you agree to let me <laughs> say 
Todd, let's go to swim around the perimeter of Applegate <laughs> and you'll just <laughs> escort me in your boat. <laughs> Thank God you have a boat. <laughs> but why why would you why would you be okay just sitting on a boat for what is it, six, eight hours? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think because I want to support you and, and we support each other in sort of general ways. Uh, and you have goals that I want to help you accomplish. And I enjoy, I mean, I enjoy hanging out on the boat. <laughs> I have one. Um, it's, it's fun for me to do that. And also it's entertaining and I get a little swimming in while I'm at it, you know, and, um, it's a nice day on the lake. I mean, like what's, what's not to like, <laughs> Joss. <laughs> I, I really wanted to say, like, Todd and Celeste are two of the most gracious people mm. that I know. Like, really, they, they, they share of themselves giving time. I mean, so much. <laughs> they have helped me through what, you know, moving, moving from one house to another and just you know, having the boat up on Lincoln Woods and taking my kids water skiing and just Celeste sitting on, I think it was Susan's stand up, sup, right? That you attached a seat to <laughs> that September 10K in Applegate Lake where it was so windy. Like I, you know, like the amount of time and love you guys give us is amazing. Amazing. Thank you. Well, we enjoy it, I think. I'm speaking for myself. Mutually, yeah, it's mutually beneficial. I mean, I, it's, we are enjoying being out there and it's enjoyable to see our friends accomplish their goals, make goals, first of all, <laughs> strive and accomplish, accomplish them. And, and I would say actually both, both of you have, have this way of just saying, do this thing and it's and 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 I don't it's it's like this spell like <laughs> the yes to your idea comes very easily it's like not like a hard thing you're like let's do this thing let's swim throughout the summer or the winter right. <laughs> 40 degree water okay like, <laughs> you both are just like this you know you got this this way about you that just blurs in and so yeah, so Todd and Celeste, you, this was your first winter, swimming all winter because we had no pool. What was that like for you? Do you think you'll do it again? Maybe is, the, is where I want to go with that. Do you want to go first, Celeste? Yeah. Sure. Well, I mean, I, I wouldn't necessarily call it swimming on my end. I applaud Dipping, the other whatever. three of you. Um, <laughs> I will say that one, having you guys say, hey, we're gonna do this and do it on a consistent basis. One, just having that, having that, that group, that support network, that, that motivated person to say, hey, we're gonna do this. That, that, that's the first like, you know, thing to kind of pull you in. Um, and um, for me, I mean, I remember maybe it was in September, October, up at Lake of the Woods, maybe the water was low 50s. I don't, I don't even know what it was, but it, I thought, oh my gosh, what is up? Is this so cold? Um, and then I had this moment just writing the thermometer down with you guys, at, you know, at Emigrant off to the dock, and it was like 40, and you know, maybe it's 41, something like that. And I remember thinking, like this is enjoyable and I'm having a great time. And again, I want to do this. Why? I don't know, but I do. <laughs> it's there. Um, and, you know, I never th thought I, that I would, I would of my own volition and <laughs> get in 40 degree water and I mean, hang out for a couple of minutes. Um, and it's, so for me, it's been, one has been fun to be with people. Two, it's wonderful to be out in this beautiful place. Three, it's a new adventure of trying something new. Like, I didn't do that before, <laughs> but now I'm doing it. <laughs> right. um, and so, like, all, all the different aspects of it are just 
like enriching to life and you know make you realize the important things in life and the good and joyful things in life um so yeah i i mean one of you says hey let's go <laughs> winter dipping i probably will go <laughs> <laughs> if you know people are at the lake on wednesdays then yeah <laughs> Todd, yeah. what about you? Are you going to winter dip this year? <laughs> this yeah, next? probably. Yeah, I mean, I... It's so close to your house. <laughs> it is. It's true. I it, don't really have an excuse, but like... You do. I, well, I, can, I have a pool in my backyard. I, can, I know all about <laughs> excuses. <laughs> true. Excuses can be come up with at any moment. Um, <laughs> any kind of excuse. <laughs> I, uh, I think that... What was it last... Was it last winter not this past winter, but the winter before when you guys were swimming. You stopped think, in November. No, <laughs> just Yeah, I was, I was like, it's too damn. Because <laughs> um, you guys were actually swimming at that point still. Like dipping hadn't occurred to us as a thing to keep right. our heads out of the water with a hat on, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, but this year, I think with the pandemic and everything, it was like, you know what, what else am I going to do? I'd like to get in the water. And so I bought neoprene shorts and neoprene socks and neoprene gloves and I sort of you know realized that you know that is still a valid thing to do and and we we turned it into dips that were again a little more social than just like oh we're trying to go for a swim because we weren't really swimming so it was kind of like what's the point in actually trying to swim yeah and so once we started dipping I think it became a little more doable and also I wasn't I didn't have that bone chilling cold that right. hurts in your bones, hitting me on my feet and my hands mm, with and other gloves, places. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I wasn't putting my head in. And so that yeah. makes a big difference too. So like I was able to do it without having just those, you know, uncontrollable shivers and, and pain and stuff. So it became kind of a fun social thing to do that I think I'd, yeah, I would do it mm. um, a couple times a week through the winter. Sure. <laughs> Assuming we have a, I mean, it was also fun just watching the lake go down, 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 down. To nothing. Up, what did up, it up, 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 up. Did it go to 2%? It went to 2%. Yeah. Wow. Could stand up in the middle in certain spots. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Jeez. So that was kind of entertaining too, it being mm -hmm. at historic lows this year, at, in addition to being out there with no pool and right. no other place to go. So I, I hope that that's just not. Not I hope it's just an, yeah, it's not the case ever again. It's an anomaly, but I hope that I will still continue to dip in it. And Jocelyn, thanks for taking the baton on the winter swimming and running with it. Yes. <laughs> because that, even if it was my idea to start, you've definitely carried the torch. And um, I'm grateful yeah. that it's happening in our community. I, I would love to try to figure out a way to, I guess we should just let people know and see people come. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I mean, last year too, Shannon, I remember Casey was coming. Yeah, uh, yeah, and I, a few times I'd run into her and try to, yeah. anyway, but we, I, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, I do think having the consistent days helped, like, you know, we were doing it every Wednesday and Sunday. So that was, that was nice before the pool opened. And, 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 and really just, um, even though I'm around people all day at my job, like knowing I'm gonna see my people at the lake, just, it really, it really was so good for my heart and soul. And um, yeah. it just being out there. And there are a lot of times I actually, I really, I, I um, because of the pandemic, um, I really try to stay on consistently waking up early, like I usually do. And, and Shannon, you're, you start at Tuesday, Thursdays at 5.30, the marathon swim stories. Mm -hmm. So that kept me going up early. And then, and then I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to go see the sunrise every day at the lake. And so I actually have gone out to the lake every day since October. There's some days I've missed here and there, but pretty consistently just walking out there um, and I just saw some goslings. So there's more geese around. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> babies are being born. They're really cute, but I'm like, oh, poor geese. 
<laughs> They're such poop machines. They're such poop machines, yeah. Oh, the dock. I cannot believe how much you cleaned that dock last winter, Jocelyn, and all of you. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Oh, community. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're over an hour, but um, thank you very much for sharing yourselves with all of my Marathon Swim Story listeners, you guys, and I meant sharing yourself with me. Um, I feel so grateful um, to have your friendship. And I guess I wanted to mention too that, you know, you guys are the core, but the group definitely extends to others who help me accomplish swims. Um, and, but I just love that I can count on you guys. So thank you very much for being there. <laughs> Thank you for Enjoy it too. pulling us into your group. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, putting the spell over you. And I hope that everybody in the world will get to meet you all when we start having Camp Shasta one of these days. <clears throat> yes. <laughs> Never, that another thing that I've told you guys, you're like, what? Okay, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. All right, you guys. Well, have a great Sunday. Thank you so much for your time today. I hope you enjoyed today's interview. Do you want to take Marathon Swim Stories with you? Subscribe on your favorite podcast provider. Want to connect with like-minded limit pushers? Join us for Marathon Swim Stories Live on Tuesdays at 5.30 a.m. Pacific, 8.30 Eastern, 13.30 GMT. Thanks for watching.